Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Breakdown. Type negation versus generic negation. Okay, before I continue on with the rest of this video, I do want to say that to answer the question about like link summoning and the easy archetypes link summoning, why did I mention Salaman Great? First of all, the easiest archetype to learn link summoning would be Sky Strikers. However, Sky Striker is a fan favorite archetype. It's going to be expensive for anyone who's new to the game and good luck trying to get that deck. So the next best deck that you can learn link summoning from is Salaman Greats. With that being said, let's get on with the rest of this video. Alrighty. So now I'm going to talk about generic negation and what it is about. Well, it generally, with generic negation, it's just negation that you can just slap in in any other deck. And why I feel type negation, which only re requires just a type, is better for Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole than generic negation. So if we go to this slide here, we can see that you can see the generic types of negation and disruption we have. You can see Borrowlude Savage Dragon, Baron de Fleur, Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess, and IP Mascarena. If we can go to the other slide, we can see some other types of uh, disruption and generic negation. Promethean Princess, Bestow of Flames, Amphibious, Swarm Ship, Ambler Whale, and SP Little Knight. And if we can finally go to the final slide of seeing like just an example board of snake eyes, obviously not accurate representation, but just giving an example field of what you can see. So we have negation there with Appaloosa, which will probably have four negates as it will have been made with four monsters. So that's a four negate Appaloosa there for monster effects. You have an Omni negate there with Borrowed Savage. You have another Omni negate there with um, Baron de Fleur, and then you have IP Mascarena, which has been scaled down there, probably with the effect of a Divine Temple of the Snake Eye, whatever it is. So in your opponent's turn, you'll be able to link summon again into the SP Little Knight. You have Promethean Princess there, so we'll probably have some graveyard access in, my, in the opponent's turn. Resummon Ambler Whale, and then just go into nonsense from there. Notice how, when with all things, with all this generic negation and all this and all this nonsense, right? There's a lot of interruption here on your opponent's turn before your opponent even does anything or has any kind of interaction. The player who is playing with Snake Eyes is able to interact with them with, in all manners of ways. Right? There's simply no counterplay. Going first has just been broken down to such absurd degrees. And the and if you're going second facing a board like this, there's absolutely no chance in hell that you are going to break this board. Okay? It's a severe problem. But what happens if we remove the generic negations? Okay, so I want you to look at this board again. Now look at this board and you can see from this board we've removed all the generic negations so all we have is disruptions you can see there so the ip mascarina as you see with the arrow keys will be able to uh be special summoned link summon your opponent's turn and get an sp little knight which will be a disruption and then the promethean princess which will be another disruption well these are disruptions these are disruptions again that do not um stop your opponent from playing and you can see here that these sort of board states are much easier to deal with. And this is why, in my eyes, if we are going to be going forward with Yu-Gi-Oh, generic negation needs to go and disruption needs to stay. Generic disruption, I am fine with this as this helps in going second. This promotes interactive gameplay and this is something we need to see more. But why is it that I talk about type negation not generic and i prefer this and why do i like this well let me give an example of how type negation can be quite nice let's move on to the next slide now look at this board this board has only type negation okay 
have a look at it. We have the Phantom of Ubel there, meaning that it's an Omni Negate. We have DDD Wave King High Caesar, which is another Negate there uh, for Summons. And then we have the, um, what do we have? We have Fiendsmith Desiree, which is a disruption there, I believe. You look at this, there's only three cards here that disrupt, and it's a much healthier board, a much more substantial board, and not so obnoxious. And this is one of the reasons why I like type negation more than generic negation, as type negation doesn't make absurd boards for the player going second to deal with. And I advocate more of this kind of play style and more of these kind of boards than generic negation. But what happens when we add generic negation on top of this type negation? And as you can see here in this slide, you're seeing here that it's completely gone out of control. Guess what happens now? We can see here that we have the Appaloosa here again for four, uh, so we have a four negate Appaloosa for monster effects. You have Phantom of Ubel, that's another Omni Negate. You have a Wave King Caesar, which can negate a summon, okay? You have the Fiendsmith Desiree, meaning that we have another uh, disruption here. We have the Rank 10, which you guessed it, is another Omni Negate, right? So we have two Omni Negates here. And uh, for Negate, Monster Effect Negate. We have also IP Masquerina, so on the opponent's turn, we can make SP Little Knight. And on top of that, we have the Promethean Princess in the graveyard, meaning we have another disruption. It's completely gone out of control. One moment, I need to look up this nonsense. What is this nonsense? Notice how with generic negation, things have gone completely out of control. We've just lost the plot here. And if you're going second, or if you're facing this in Yu-Gi-Oh, there's absolutely no chance, no way to play. It doesn't promote healthy gameplay. It doesn't promote any kind of gameplay. It just promotes defeatism. Facts. It promotes just gameplay which no one wants. Because there's no gameplay to be promoted here. It promotes nothing. And this is the sort of thing that I would like to see go. I'd like for the generic negates to go. In my eyes, Appaloosa needs to go. And I would also even, although this is controversial, I would also have IP Mascarena to go as well. I believe disruption is fine, but we, when we have disruption that can just be made on the opponent's turn, I believe that's way too much. Okay, make, being able to make a disruption at any time, in my eyes, I think is a bit of a problem. But just having disruption in the opponent's turn, that's fine. But making it at any time on the opponent's turn, that is wrong. That's why I feel we cross a line here. And that is why, in my eyes, when it comes to what negation would I choose? Would it be type negation or generic negation? I'm going to choose type negation every time. As type negation as I've shown you here, is much healthier to deal with, much better for Yu-Gi-Oh in the long run, and means that there's less hand traps, less decks are built with, with balance in mind. If more decks have are built around type negation, it means you need less hand traps to deal with them. Because you need less hand traps to deal with them, it means that you won't see these hand trap focused uh, decks in our competitive scene anymore. And if there's no hand trap focused decks in the competitive scene, it means more decks can compete. If more decks can compete, that means that the meta scene will be extremely diverse and will have everything under the sun being able to compete. And when you, and when you can compete with everything, then it is a free for all. And that is how a competitive scene should be. It should be that everything can compete. There should not be such thing as the best deck. In my eyes, Yu-Gi-Oh should be like a toolbox. The reason why I don't like generic negation as it doesn't offer toolbox, the toolbox nature that Yu-Gi-Oh is about. It shouldn't be about what deck, what cards, what card is the best. It should be about that there is no card that is, that is good for any situation that only a card is good in a certain situation, but in a different situation, this card is better. That's what Yugo, in my eyes, should be about. There should be no card which is the best. 
The best card should not exist. There should only be the best card for the best situation. And in one situation, that card will be good, but the card in a different situation will not be good. And you'll need a different card for different situations. Not one card that covers all situations. So, my overall conclusion is that when it comes to uh, type negation and generic negation, that type negation is better for Yu-Gi-Oh! in the long run. Type negation promotes healthy gameplay, promotes diverse gameplay, and promotes skillful gameplay. And that is the kind of gameplay we need to see more in Yu-Gi-Oh! Also, the other reason why I like type negation is that apart from all the positive things that I've mentioned that it promotes, it also promotes the kind of mindset that we need to see in Yu-Gi-Oh! The mindset of anything is possible and promoting toolbox gameplay, where there is no best card. There's only a good card for a good situation. And a different situation requires a different method. So there's no, there isn't, the best method for the best situation for every situation, but the best method for one situation. That's what we need in Yu-Gi-Oh. Currently in Yu-Gi-Oh, my main issue with generic negation is that it completely destroys the concept of a good card in a good in a good situation. As generic negation, all it says is that you can use this card. This is the best card in every situation, and there is no inherent downsides. That's one of the reasons why I hate generic negation so much, as it doesn't promote strategical gameplay. All it promotes is the sort of gameplay loop of, I'm going to summon this card, I'm going to deny my opponent all manners of play, and they will have no way to interact with me. This is the sort of gameplay that we should not, we don't want to see in Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't want to see it. It's not good for Yu-Gi-Oh's long-term health and it's something that needs to be abolished and be removed from Yu-Gi-Oh as a whole. Well, that's all of all I've got to say about this matter. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master. My fate, right, is in your hands.